Hi, this is Mike Ayton, and I'm here to look at the uh, Phoenix 2. Now, uh, this was um, designed by Dave Hill under the uh, Crane Song banner uh, for them. It's native and DSP, and it runs on Pro Tools 10 and 11 AAX format. It's great that it's DSP. Um, I'm an HDX user, so... Uh, anything that runs on DSP gets a huge thumbs up in this camp. Um, now, um, Phoenix 2 is runs on floating point maths, and uh, what that means I'm never quite sure. I leave that up to the intellectuals of the world who are clever at coding, but I'm sure it's a very great thing. Um, it also has a much lower Lois floor than the original plug-in, which um, for those of you who are on the original, probably worth upgrading just for that alone. Now, uh, Dave um, has taken his kind of uh, all the craft that he used when he was the electronics designer for the uh, ATR services ARIA discrete tape recorders and he, he's put all this electronic um, and magnetic cleverness and, and, and put it into this Phoenix plug-in. And what does that mean, I hear you ask? It's... Well, really, it's a non-linear saturation um, that's created by magnetic tape. And it, it has all those characteristics as, as well as the, the characteristics of the record and replay electronics. Um, so um, it also has the equalisation curve of, of the tape electronics or the replay so if we take a look at the plugin, there are five different tape uh, stroke analog electronic effect types over here. And there are three different sorts of brightness. Uh, we have here the, the gold, which is essentially flat. We have sapphire, which is brighter. And we have opal, which uh, over on the left hand side here, which is the warmest setting. Um, now, on the plugin, we have an input trim and we also have an output trim. Now, when the plugin uh, is in bypass, it's in bypass, but when the trims are in zero mode, so input and output trims are both in zero and the process is at zero, what that effectively means is the plugin is identical to being in bypass and what comes in literally goes out. Nothing is uh, altered and it's essentially bit transparent. So nothing happens until we start adjusting how much of the saturation and analog electronics we want to add into the signal. Now the point of having an input trim uh, and an output trim is that the um, the way this plugin works is that as as things tend towards digital zero, it tends to have more and more of an effect. Um, so, for if you've got slightly lower level signals, you're able to boost them with the input trim, and if you've got very hot signals that were, would be in danger of clipping, you can pull them down with the input trim. But then on the output trim on the other side, you can put your your signal back up to or pull it down from where it should be. Okay, so that's a quick sort of run through of the layout. It's a very simple graphical layout. Um, it, it's what more can I say? You know, it's it's a few knobs. Let's cut to the chase and um, see how it sounds. Okay, there are five different flavours here of, of tape and analogue electronics um, that you can choose from. What we have is, the first one is called Luminescence, which is the most neutral of the five settings. The next one is Iridescent, which has uh, apparently a fatter bottom end and mid-range than Luminescence. Radiance uh, has a more aggressive form of compression on the tape side of it. And Dark Essence has uh, even more aggressive 
and it can actually really, really help by reducing sibilance. By what it can do is is increasing the loudness of all other frequencies apart from sort of the sibilance areas. So giving the effective um, oral um, result of of sound making things sound less less sibilant. And uh, the last one is luster, which is a kind of um, a variable curve, which is it's it's the most gentle of, of all of them when it's on uh, on its lowest process setting but if you crank it up it um it has uh, almost as much as dark essence on the on the uh, dave hill source side so let's have a little listen and see now i'm predominantly a post production mixer so um most of what i do involves dialogue so i've got a voice over here recorded by uh, myself here and it's of Jane Copeland doing a corporate voiceover and we'll just play it uh, a few seconds of it naturally. A business case contains a few important components. It will be driven by the overall objectives, strategies and planned activities. Okay there we have it. So let's now add in some of the effect. Now if we go to loot and we'll go to the uh, luminescence the which is the uh, most neutral of the five. And if we leave it on gold, which is also the, the most kind of um, neutral in terms of, of, of the brightness, and I'll just start adding in the process and let you hear it as I, as I crank it in. A business case contains a few important components. It will be driven by the overall objectives, strategies and planned activities. These will drive numerous assumptions which will in turn drive the profit and loss and the key financial metrics. OK, so as you could hear, it fattens up the bottom end there. Now, if, if I move across to Opal, you should hear a darkening and a warming of, of the overall characteristic of the sound. A business case contains a few important components. It will be driven by the overall objectives, strategies and planned activities. Back to These gold. will drive numerous assumptions, which will in turn drive the profit and loss and the key financial metrics. And over to Sapphire, Finally, where we get some, some of the brighter harmonics coming through. With clear mitigation and contingency plans. OK, so if we leave it on the... Uh, I'm not sure. I think I prefer... I would vary between gold and the sapphire. I think I'd probably stick with gold. Let's now go between the uh, characteristics and we'll go for, from luminescent into iridescent and hear the difference. So what we should hear is a richening of the bottom end and the mid-range compared to how it is now. Here we go. A business case contains a few important components. It will be driven by the overall objectives, strategies and planned activities. Now you can definitely These hear the low mid-range there. Assumptions, which will in turn drive the profit and loss and the key financial metrics. And here into Radiant. Finally, there needs to be a detailed risk and sensitivity analysis with clear mitigation and... Oh, that's very clear plans. now, very marked. A business case contains a few important components. And dark essence, it will be driven by the overall which is the variable one. Strategies and planned activities. So down here it's quite These light. These will drive numerous assumptions, which will in turn drive the drive profit it. and loss and the key financial metrics. Finally, there needs to be a detailed risk and sensitivity analysis. And I'll go back through them again. mitigation and contingency plans. There's luster. A business case contains a few important components. It will be driven by the overall objectives, strategies and planned activities. These will drive numerous assumptions, which will in turn drive the profit and loss and the key financial metrics. It really darkens Finally, down that top end and warms it up. Detailed risk and sensitivity analysis. Let's go back to gold. With clear mitigation and contingency plans. Iridescence. A business case contains a few important components. It will be driven by the overall objectives, strategies again. and planned activities. 
These will drive numerous assumptions. Suddenly, when we go back to the original, turn, drive the profit and sounds loss, kind of and the key financial metrics. unremarkable without. It's one of those Finally, quite subtle effects um, risk and that analysis. you put it in and, and contingency plans. you think, yep, yeah, that's nice, I'm a liking it. And, and it's, it's subtle, components. but very nice. But when you take it away, you suddenly... Objectives, strategies, and planned activities. It's like someone's made the world very boring all of a sudden when we go into bypass. OK, now, for those of you who are music lovers um, and not post-production people, uh, here's some, some music I recorded today. Now, um, I have to add that because I'm a post-production mixer and not a music mixer, um, I'm not a fantastic musician. Now... Uh, to be able to play copyright-free music, uh, I've had to record something. So uh, I recorded some of my guitar practicing this morning. So I'm just kind of vamping around over a, a G7 chord. And please, musicians of the world, um, apologies for my poor guitar playing. And uh, I'm learning. I'm trying to study at the moment. So uh, please be forgiving of my playing. OK, without further ado, here we go. It's a bit too much. Okay. Starked it down. And if we want those highs. if you overcook it. And finally, Dark Essence, the variable one. Okay, so there we have it. That shows you uh, a little few examples of Phoenix 2 and how the um, tape saturation and analog electronics that Dave Hill has previously built can be put into the sound of your sources. Um, I particularly like this plugin. I, I really do think it adds it, it adds something. Like with a lot of things, it's capable of being overcooked. Uh, and I think subtlety is the name of the game here, but there are times when it really, really does add something and, and a, a really nice colour to the sound of, of what you're doing. And there's a lot of variation um, you can achieve with this plugin. And you subtly, I think it's a, a really, really great tool and uh, a nice plugin. <laughs> 